will he come through for the president? In the end, the U.S. taxpayer... Senator Al Gore, will he live up to high expectations? Almost and he said he really has some... Jim Stockdale, will he match Sunday strong showing by Ross Perot? From Atlanta, NBC News, Decision 92, the vice presidential debate. Here is Tom Brokaw. Good evening from the Theater for the Arts at Georgia Tech here in Atlanta, Georgia, where tonight three men who want to be just a heartbeat from the presidency will meet in their only scheduled debate of this campaign. And this meeting tonight will be a study in contrast going well beyond ideologies. Two of these candidates tonight are baby boomers, 45-year-old Vice President Dan Quayle, 44-year-old Senator Al Gore, two young men from backgrounds of privilege and from the Congress and the Senate of the United States. The third is Admiral James Stockdale, Medal of Honor winner from seven and a half years imprisonment in Vietnam. The moderator is Hal Bruno of ABC News. Good evening from Atlanta and welcome to the Vice Presidential Debate sponsored by the Nonpartisan Commission on Presidential Debates. It's being held here in the Theater for the Arts on the campus of Georgia Tech. I'm Hal Bruno from ABC News, and I'm going to be moderating tonight's debate. The participants are Republican Vice President Dan Quayle. Uh, Democratic Senator Al Gore. and retired Vice Admiral James Stockdale, who is the Vice Presidential nominee for Independent Candidate Ross Perot. Now, the ground rules for tonight's debate. Each candidate will have two minutes for an opening statement. I will then present the issues to be discussed. For each topic, the candidates will have a minute and 15 seconds to respond. And this will be followed by a five-minute discussion period in which they can ask questions of each other if they so choose. Now, the order of response has been determined by a drawing and uh, will rotate with each topic. At the end of the debate, each candidate will have two minutes for a closing statement. Uh, our radio and TV audience should uh, know that the candidates were given an equal allocation of auditorium seats for their supporters. So I'd like to ask the audience here in the theater to please refrain from applause or any partisan demonstration once the debate is underway because it takes time away from the candidates. So with that plea from your moderator, uh, let's get started. And we'll turn first to Senator Gore for his opening statement. Good evening. It's great to be here in Atlanta for this debate where America will be showcased to the world when the 1996 Olympics are put on right here. It's appropriate because in a real sense, our discussion this evening will be about what kind of nation we want to be four years from now. It's also a pleasure to be with my two opponents this evening. Admiral Stockdale, may I say it's a special honor to share this stage with you. Those of us who served in Vietnam looked at you as a national hero even before you were awarded the Congressional Medal of Honor. And Mr. Vice President, Dan, if I may, it was 16 years ago that you and I went to uh, the Congress on the very first day together. I'll make you a deal this evening. If you don't try to compare George Bush to Harry Truman, I won't compare you to Jack Kennedy. <laughs> Harry you remember Truman. the last time someone compared themselves to Jack Kennedy? Do you remember what they said? <laughs> Harry Truman, it's worth remembering assumed the presidency when Franklin Roosevelt died here in Georgia. Only one of many occasions when fate thrust a vice president into the Oval Office in a time of crisis. It's something to think about during the debate this evening. But our real discussion is going to be about change. Bill Clinton and I stand for change because we don't believe our nation can stand four more years of what we've had under George Bush and Dan Quayle. 
When the recession came, they were like a deer caught in the headlights, paralyzed into inaction, blinded to the suffering of, and pain of bankruptcies and people who were unemployed. We have an environmental crisis, a health insurance crisis, substandard education. It is time for a change. Bill Clinton and I want to get our country moving forward again, put our people back to work, and create a bright future for the United States of America. Thank you. Okay. Uh, the next statement will be from Vice President Quayle. <laughs> Well, thank you, Senator Gore, for reminding me about my performance in the 1988 vice presidential debate. This is 1992. Bill Clinton is running against President George Bush. There are two things that I'm going to stress during this debate. One, Bill Clinton's economic plan and his agenda will make matters much, much worse. He will raise your taxes. He will increase spending. He will make government bigger. Jobs will be lost. Second. Bill Clinton does not have the strength nor the character to be President of the United States. Let us look, let us look, let us look at the agendas. President Bush wants to hold the line on taxes, Bill Clinton wants to raise taxes. President Bush is for a balanced budget amendment, Bill Clinton is opposed to it. We want to reform the legal system because it's too costly, Bill Clinton wants the status quo. We want to reform the health care system, Bill Clinton wants to ration health care. Bill Clinton wants to empower government. We want to empower people. In St. Louis, Missouri, in June of this year, Bill Clinton said this, America is the mockery of the world. He is wrong. At some time during these next four years, there is going to be a crisis. There will be an international crisis. I can't tell you where it's going to be. I can't even tell you the circumstances, but it will happen. We need a president who has the experience who has been tested, who has the integrity and qualifications to handle the crisis. The president has been tested. The president has the integrity and the character. The choice is yours. You need to have a president you can trust. Can you really trust Bill Clinton? Admiral Stockdale, your opening statement, please, sir. Who am I? Why am I here? <laughs> I'm not a politician, everybody knows that, so don't expect me to use the language of the Washington Insider. 37 years in the Navy, and only one of them up there in Washington. And now I'm an academic. The centerpiece of my life was the Vietnam War. I was there the day it started. I led the first bombing raid against North Vietnam. I was there the day it ended, and I was there for everything in between. Ten years in Vietnam, aerial combat, and torture. I know things about the Vietnam War better than anybody in the world. I know some things about the Vietnam War better than anybody in the world. And I know how governments, how, you, how American governments can be can be courageous and how they can be callow and that's important that's one thing I'm an insider on I was the leader of the underground of the uh, American pilots who were shot down in prison in North Vietnam you should know that the American character displayed in those dungeons by those fine men was the thing of beauty I look back on those years as the beginning of wisdom. Learning everything a man can learn about the vulnerabilities and the strengths that are ours as Americans. Why am I here tonight? I am here because I have in my brain and in my heart what it takes to lead America through tough times. Thank you, Admiral. 